Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Watch, and in this video we'll be doing a direct head-to-head -head comparison between the new BlackBerry Classic and the BlackBerry Passport that came out just a few months ago. Now, even though these two phones are coming from the same manufacturer, BlackBerry, and they have physical keyboards and a touchscreen, they are quite different in terms of overall form factor and design. And specifically what we're going to do in this video is focus on the advantages and disadvantage of each of the devices and see how just generally these two BlackBerry devices stack up against each other. So if you're interested in that, Definitely stay tuned and let's get right into this comparison. Now physically side by side, you can see that the BlackBerry Passport is quite a large phone. It's a very different design for BlackBerry and uh, certainly a departure from the classic look that you see on the BlackBerry Classic. Now one thing you can notice is the Classic is a little bit taller, measuring about 131 millimeters versus 128 millimeters on the Passport, but the Passport is certainly a wide phone at uh, around 90.3 millimeters versus 72.4 millimeters on the BlackBerry Classic. Now in terms of thickness, the impressive thing about the Passport is it is a little bit thinner than the Classic measuring about 9.3 millimeters versus 10.2 millimeters. However, the Classic is a little bit lighter measuring about 177 grams versus 196 grams. Now ergonomics are a little bit weird on the Passport if you haven't noticed already. You really need quite large hands to basically optimize the use of the keyboard and the overall kind of uh, grapple of it is kind of intense and awkward and I can get certainly cramps after using this thing the whole day. So it's definitely an awkward device to hold. Uh, plus the, when you take a look at the ergonomic features on the Classic, it's a beautifully uh, proportioned device. You can easily grip it with one hand and uh, even if you have larger or smaller size hands, it fits pretty much everybody's kind of uh, physical attributes quite nicely. Both devices have a nice grippy back and they're both made out of really premium parts in terms of rubber plastic and they both have a metal band around it. Now the core design philosophy on the Passport was pretty much to make a large screen QWERTY keyboard smartphone and uh, what they did to do that is basically make the thing wider but as you can see the Passport still has a square screen so it's not really ideal for multimedia consumption compared to most of the modern day smartphones that have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio screen uh, which certainly suits more HD consumption so if you do watch uh, pretty much every kind of video out there you're going to have huge bars on the top and bottom of that display which is essentially kind of wasted resolution but it's great in terms of data entry stuff like that uh, and it's certainly kind of a benefit to have a larger screen than a smaller screen as we see on the classic but there is a big compromise and that is form factor and the key Keyboard. Now the keyboard what they've done is made the thing quite wide and we don't have the BlackBerry utility belt that we see on the classic and that's kind of a staple of most uh, Blackberries especially from the bold generation which comprise of uh, four different physical buttons the end send receive buttons uh, back button as well as a menu button and we have a classic optical trackpad which uh, certainly I'm a fan of and it has a couple of different handy features in terms of scrolling and uh, you can uh, do multi select features features with it if you want to organize your inbox a little bit easier and there's even a cursor on the web browser if you want to use that. Now the cool thing about the keyboard itself on the Passport keyboard is that it actually has capacitive sensors on the keys themselves so you can actually swipe up and down to scroll through your emails and kind of use the whole keyboard as a uh, capacitive trackpad which doubles up uh, the functionality of that keyboard which is certainly kind of a cool tool and you could do a couple of gestures on the surface area itself which kind of utilizes the keyboard on the passport a little bit more but in terms of the overall keyboard performance and form factor there's no competition the classic is like 110 times better in terms of inputting information onto your phone the individual keys you'll find on the classic are a very nicely spaced and proportion compared to the wider uh, narrower keys you find on the passport and overall very easy to type with Additionally, if you take a look at the keys on the BlackBerry Passport and the Classic, you can see that they're raised to an angle depending upon which region of the keyboard they belong to, which definitely makes access to those keys a little bit easier, especially if you have larger thumbs like I do. Now, one other problem I had with the Passport was the placement of that spacebar, which was too small to begin with, and it was at the same level as the lower alphabet keys that we find on the Passport. Now, thankfully, the BlackBerry Classic has a much wider and properly proportioned 
positioned and placed uh, spacebar. And if we uh, zoom in closely, you can see that we have left, right, shift buttons and system button, as well as a proper alt button so you can input numbers a lot quicker and properly. And on the right hand side, we have a nice delete or backspace button as well as an enter button, which is certainly necessary if you're going to make any kind of smartphone with a physical keyboard. Now, as we mentioned before, the primary idea of the Passport is to merge a large screen smartphone with a physical keyboard. And if you take a look at the actual screen specifications between these two devices, you can see that we have a much larger screen, four and a half inches, a full inch larger than what we find on the Classic, and it's double the resolution at 1440 by 1440 with a PPI count about 453. And in terms of viewing web pages and spreadsheets and uh, looking at data and things like that, it is handy to have that larger uh, screen if you need that. But in most cases, I think uh, the Classic is definitely passable in uh, most of the things that you would use a BlackBerry for. Now, in terms of color rendition and things like that, they're both pretty much equal. And as we mentioned before, when you're watching movies on both of them, because they're a square screen, you're going to have large bars at the top and bottom of the display. Now, in terms of the internal specifications, they are a little bit different. We have basically a dual core processor from Snapdragon on the Classic that's talking about 1.5 gigahertz versus a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 chip that's a quad core processor clocking about 2.26 gigahertz on the Passport. So it is a little bit faster. And when we take a look at the Geekbench 3 results, you can definitely see that the Passport is the better and higher performing device. Additionally, in terms of RAM, we have one extra gigabyte of RAM at three gigabytes on the Passport versus two gigabytes on the Classic. But I think two gigs is pretty sufficient and BlackBerry OS is pretty efficient in terms of managing your data and uh, system resources. And you can multitask all day on these two things without uh, losing a sweat. Now, even though these are not media consumption devices, you can upgrade the internal memory up to 128 gigabytes because they both have internal uh, SD expansion slots, which is excellent. Now, in terms of connectivity, we both have LTE available on both phones. And uh, in terms of Wi-Fi, we do have the newer standard of AC Wi-Fi capabilities on the Passport versus the Passport uses 802.11n, but it does have dual band connectivity. Now let's move on and talk about cameras. When we take a look at the front-facing cameras, they're both pretty much identical using two megapixel sensors, but on the rear-facing side, we have 13 megapixel stills capabilities on the Passport versus eight megapixel stills, and they both can do 1080p video, but the BlackBerry Passport can do 1080p at 60 frames per second versus 30 frames per second 1080p on the Classic. Now, as you can see from the sample test footage and images, the, both are kind of similar in terms of overall color rendition, although I would have to say that the Passport is slightly sharper at times, especially rendering out fine detail. In most cases, the autofocusing system on uh, the Classic is kind of slow. You definitely miss a lot of different shots. So you definitely have to be pretty still and stable in shooting your images to get kind of clear results. Now, in terms of the stabilization system in the video mode, we have optical stabilization on the Passport, which is definitely going to deliver some really smooth looking video footage compared to the in-camera software-based stabilization system we have on the Classic. Classic. So uh, in terms of cameras, I would definitely say that the Passport edges the Classic up a little bit and that's kind of an additional feature they are getting on top of the larger screen. Now, in terms of battery life, one big difference between these two is overall capacity. We have a uh, non-removal batteries on both phones, but in terms of capacity, we have 3450 milliamp hours on uh, the Passport and uh, 2515 milliamp hours on the Classic. And as you can see, we have a completely massive battery on the Passport. Now, you do have to factor in that it has a larger screen. It has to power that screen for a longer period of time and things like that. But overall, uh, even with that larger display, I get at something like two and a half days of usage on the Passport versus about a day and a half to two days on the BlackBerry Classic. So you definitely get a, a little bit more battery performance on the Passport because of that larger overall form factor. And that's one of the perks of having a larger phone is that you could put a larger battery in there. But again, I do have to say that there is really no issues in terms of battery performance on the Classic. It's just not up there with uh, the Passport in terms of its performance but certainly acceptable in terms of most smartphone standards. But on that, guys, that's really it. If you have any specific questions about anything I talked about, please make sure to leave that on a comment down below. And also make sure to check out our comparison of the BlackBerry Classic versus the standard iPhone 6. And Maja just did that comparison. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. But on that, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you later. Take care. <laughs>